the 11th tutorial on 8085 programming and the topic of today is functions in 8085 or we call them subroutines so first of all what is a function function is nothing but it is a subroutine or a special sub program to which we give some data and it will perform certain task and return a some results it can be called from our main program so for understanding that let us have a look at this program this program is very simple but I have made it through functions so the program is very simple we have three registers a b and c in which we have kept some data 0 5 0 2 and 0 6 and the purpose of this program is to add b and c registers and keep the data or the result at location number 5 and in a register we have a data of 0 5 so we add 0 5 again to this a register and we will be storing it at 6 so this program is very simple and can be made without the use of functions also but to demonstrate what functions are and how they can be implemented in 8085 we have made this program so what we will be doing is we have designed two functions first of all let us see that this is the length of our program whenever halt instruction is encountered so our program will end there so this is the length of our program and you can see that we have written two call instructions here these call instructions are nothing but they are called to two functions the name of these functions are label 1 and label 2 and these two functions will be accomplishing the set tasks that is the the first function will add register b and c and it will store the result onto the location number 5 and the second function it will add 5 again to the accumulator and it will not store that result to 6 we will manually store the result to the location number 6 so to accomplish this task the definition of function is defined in the same file it starts with label 1 colon and remember that there is a space between the first executable statement and the label that you write and the first executable statement has to be written immediately after the label if you will start this executable statement after the label it will give an error so it has to be written here only and this label terminates at this return statement return or ret so whenever we call this from the main program it will transfer the control to this label it will execute this line of code and then it will return to the next location which is to be executed which in our case happens to be another function and the another function is defined here label to and then return statement so after that it will return to the main program and execute it and get halted so in this program there are various things to learn first of all whenever we call a function so what will happen is if the control of the program is transferred from this location to the location of that function so whenever this code is executed and this program wants to return to the original function it will look for the address of the next executable instruction which in our case happens to be at the sixth line so that address is automatically kept onto a stack so we will see how that is kept onto a stack in this uh, video tutorial and uh, similarly whenever we are using stack inside a function we have to keep in mind that we have to use equal number of push and pop instructions suppose uh, let us see that we have used one push instruction and one pop instruction in our function if I will use two push and one pop then when returning through this subroutine to the original program this will not have a correct address because we have already kept the address to return onto the stack and if we will push it many times and pop it less number of times then the return instruction will not get a proper address to return to the main program so that is to be kept in mind and also accumulator is a register which will be holding the result of many calculations during the execution of program so if we want to save the data in the accumulator then inside a subroutine whenever we go to a subroutine we should save the data from a to any of the register pairs B, C, D, E or HL although A is a 8-bit register and D happens to be 8-bit also so we have moved A to D and then we have pushed D onto the stack actually we have seen in our previous videos that D will not be pushed onto the stack but D register completely will be pushed onto the stack so we do not bother what contents E has but ultimately our A through D register has been pushed onto the stack and after the execution of this function means this subroutine that a will be retrieved by using a pop statement so pop d will pop the stack 
and D registered will be filled with the previous value that we have kept initially. So A will be retrieved by this move AD statement. So this is necessary because uh, whenever we will return to the original program, the value of A was different earlier, which was modified in this program. So this step is necessary. Now after this, the program is very simple. So let us first understand this program. We have these three ABC registers and first of all we will add B and C. So we have given a call instruction, call label 1. So when this function goes to this label 1, move D, A and push D are used to keep the contents of accumulator register onto the stack. Already by this call function, the return address is put onto the stack and over it we have we are putting this A register through DE register onto the stack. So one stack operation is done automatically by this call function and one stack operation is what we are doing. So we need to take the content of this at later stages. Now we will perform our operation since we have to add BNC registers and add command is such that anything can be added to accumulator only. So we will put C register into accumulator and then we will add B to the accumulator. So we have done the same thing. C register is moved to A register through this move command. Remember that C to A data will be transferred. Move A and C, move A comma C will transfer the data from C register to A register. It will copy the data from C register to A register. And then through add B command, the result of addition of A and B will be stored in A itself. And uh, then if you want to transfer this result to location 5, in the memory then what we will be doing is we will be using STA0005H statement that's okay and that we have done but what is this statement MVID, 0H doing here I have done it intentionally because I want to show that if even if D is modified inside this function it hardly matters because it might be the case that we require more registers for doing calculations so that does not matter we will be using pop statement later so it will pop the contents of the stack onto the DE register before returning because we want to retrieve the value of accumulator for the main program. So that's what we have done here and then that value through D register is transferred to A register through move statement and then we return to the main program. So now this return statement will take me to the next executable instruction which happens to be call label 2. Now it's not necessary that you should call these functions consecutively only. You can have this call and then you can write some code lines here and then you can call some next function or you may not call some function. So it's not necessary that you should call them sequentially only. So the second call is for adding 5 to this accumulator. Now our accumulator already contains a value of 0, 05 because we have done this through the pop statement here. So now we want to add it, add a 5 to it. So we have called label 2 and inside label 2 we have moved a value of 0, 05 in hexadecimal into the L register and we have added L to the accumulator and the result is already stored in the accumulator. So we have returned from here and STA0006H is used to store the result of addition onto this sixth location. So this is the theme of this program and this is how function works but the important thing is we should see how this operation takes place inside the memory. So for that purposes I have expanded this thing this by dragging it down and then I have chosen a location 4200 and the decimal equivalent of that is 16896 so I have taken location 16895 to display and what I want to show is where is the code stored so we already know that for this GNU 885 simulator uh, the code will be stored starting from 4200 hexadecimal location and the decimal equivalent of which is this. So I have kept this location here 16895 one location less because we want to see the data from the very beginning. So I have hit enter and initially there is nothing. So I will be executing this program step by step. Now to execute this program step by step we need to press F5. So once you put F5 so when firstly F5 is, put, uh, F5 is pressed the code will come into the memory. You can see that now numbers appear here and the line, the blue line is here which shows that this is the next instruction to be executed. Now what are these code numbers? We are already aware of these decimal numbers from our previous video tutorials where we have seen that the MVI is the opcode and uh, this A is uh, MVI is a opcode and this 05 is the data. So it has got a decimal equivalent. So we will first recap that and then we will move on to the explanation of this. 
so we have seen this table in our earlier video tutorials in this tutorial I will also give you the same link to download in case you haven't seen the previous videos so here we have given serial number mnemonics operand opcode and then opcode in decimal and bytes so if suppose this is the ADC statement so and the operand is a register on which it is operating so it has got a opcode of ATF or in decimal we can say it has got a opcode of 143 so we are interested in this decimal opcode because this decimal opcode is what is shown by 8085 microprocessor that we are using and it is occupying only one byte in the memory so this is the meaning of this table so let us see opcode and the bytes that various instruction occupy for three important instructions that will be used in program so one instruction is call instruction which is used for calling a subroutine so call then there is a label which happens to be label 1 or label 2 in our case and its decimal opcode equivalent is 205 and it occupies 3 bytes in memory so call requires 1 byte and this address is of 16 bits so it will require 2 bytes in the memory that is why total 3 bytes in memory are required similarly for written statement we have opcode as 201 and uh, this is a decimal opcode, hexadecimal would be C9 but we are interested in decimal only and it occupies only one byte in the memory. Similarly for halt instruction we have opcode as 118 and it also occupies one byte in the memory. So where we have got this list from, this list can be ob obtained from this reference and when you will type this in your browser you will see a page like this and through this link when you will click on this link you can actually download this list. But if you can't find this here you make sure that you have clicked on 2016 and March here and there will be reference for 8085 because I may update this page in future and there will be more posts so if you can't find this link here make sure that you click on 2016 and inside that you click on March so you will get this required list now back to our program so here you can see that the program has been loaded when we have pressed F5 for the first time and you can see that 205 was the opcode for call so there are two calls and we can see that there are two calls inside our main program also and the first call took three bytes in memory this is the first byte second byte and the third byte 205 is for call instruction and this is for the address the address which uh, the main program should go to to call that subroutine and similarly 205 is called again and then these two bytes are for addresses so they will go to that particular address when the program is executed now what happens is when we make a call statement through this 205 that is we have called the subroutine for the first time then when this subroutine will return through this written statement it will return here means it will return to the next executable statement so onto the stack the value of this next executable statements address will be passed to that so that happens to be this location because three bytes will be taken by the first call instruction and 4209 happens to be the location which will be pushed onto the stack automatically by this call label one instruction and we already know that since the stack is implemented through 16 bit and this is total 16 bit so 42 and 09 will be separately stored because 09 will be 8 bit and 42 will be 8 bit but since the display here is in decimal so we will be able to see its decimal equivalent so the decimal equivalent of 42 42 is a hexadecimal number and the, and the decimal equivalent of that is 66 and for 09 it is 09 and similarly when the second call instruction is executed it will take three bytes and the next instruction the next uh, line where it has to execute the code is 420c so 42 is equivalent is 66 and 0c is 12 in decimal so this is we sh what we should keep in our mind and we will execute the code line by line so that we can see the required changes so what I have done is huh, we can see one thing more that for written statements the opcode happens to be this 201 in decimal the decimal equivalent of opcode is 201 so you can see two written statements also by scrolling down in this same memory pane so now we will execute this program line by line so you can see that we are executing this program line by line and I have already uh, started the display of memory at the location 65520 because FFFF0 is 65520 why I have done this because we already know that the stack is implemented at the bottom most point in the memory so I have 
move down to this particular location and we will see the stack operations so i'm executing this program one by one and we know what's happening in the register so now this call label one will be executed so this will automatically transfer the address of next instruction to be executed means this instruction before going to the subroutine so let us see that huh. now we can see that this 66 and 9 has been moved so we already know that 66 is 42 and 9 is 09 so 4209 was the address of the next instruction so it has been correctly moved here so why is this zero because initially the stack pointer was at ffff because it is by default placed in this location in the beginning and when a 16 byte address is transferred here these two locations are filled up then now it will it has moved on to this label and this code will be executed so d will be moved to a now through this push d statement the a register will be moved on to the stack by us and this has been moved so value of 5 appears here and this 0 is also there because d e pair was used so e initially had a value of 0 which is also there now so d e pair has occupied this and the stack pointer has hit this location now fffp means whatever will be there it will be pushed onto this location if there is another push statement now we have executed these lines of code the code will run smoothly and through this statement the data will be stored at the appropriate location as a result which we will see in the last now this pop d statement has been executed and now you can see that initially the contents of a were 0 8 after the execution of this they should become 0 5 means after this transfer from d to a so let us execute this pop d statement and this pop d statement will pop out these two values 0 and 5 into the de register pair d will contain 5 and e will contain 0 and uh, this pop statement has been executed and d is moved to a through this move a comma d statement and you can see the value of a now becomes 5 so we have correctly got the value of a which was initially present in this program before leaving this main program so now return statement through this return statement we have reached to the original program and the value of a is whatever it was in the beginning and now sim in the similar fashion this call is instruction will be executed and you can see that now since after the popping of this uh, through this pop d statement the program counter has reached to this location and after that when we have returned the program counter has again reached to this location so when the second call label to statement was executed now the values that we have got were 62 and 12 which happens to be the address 4 2 and 0 c which was the address of the next line to be executed it is sta 0006 h and in this way this program is completely executed and this result is stored at this particular location and the program is halted so finally we can move on to the location number 0 by typing 0 here and we can see that the result of 5 and 6 result at location number 5 and 6 as 8 and 10 is stored so 5 plus 5 will be a and a in decimal is 10 and similarly 6 plus 2 is 8 so the result is displayed correctly so in this program we have seen how subroutine works and we should and what should we take care of while writing subroutines there should be equal number of push and pop operations and uh, we can also see that these same registers are used in the main program and these subroutines so we should take a great care of them as we have seen here that we have used pushed operation for a and pop operation for a similarly you can do the same operation by transferring the values to the memory so whatever values you want to keep you can keep them in memory because memory is accessible to all of these three routines and subroutines so these registers are very minimum because they will be involved in calculations so it's always a good practice to keep that data in the memory so this is all about how functions and subroutines are made in 885 keep watching our channel for